Hi everybody, welcome to yet another video by After Institute. This time we are going to talk about cervicogenic dizziness, the dizziness which is coming from the cervical spine. There was a study that they did among 1000 cervical spondylitis population and they found that 50% of these patients were having cervicogenic dizziness as the part of their symptom of cervical spondylitis. That means if you are having neck pain, you are more likely to have cervicogenic dizziness as well. But the problem is some people also would have vertigo which often times get confused between dizziness and the vertigo. Vertigo you all know that it is a problem in the clear but it is also the fact that many people are suffering with cervicogenic dizziness. Indeed the number of people who are having cervicogenic dizziness is more compared to the number of people who are suffering with vertigo in this current world. So people often get uh, confused and people use these two terms interchangeably so that they may not get appropriate treatment because they are not diagnosing it correctly. The committee for classification of vestibular disorders have clearly stated that the term dizziness and the vertigo should not be used interchangeably because they both are distinct entities for a different reason. So, the intent of this video is to make the public and the professionals understand the fundamental differences between the cervicogenic dizziness and the vertigo so that they get the right treatment based on the type of problem that they have got. When it comes to cervicogenic dizziness, the dizziness is from the cervical spine or the structures in and around the cervical spine. But there are other types of dizziness as well. Some are vascular in nature. For example, in low BP, there is something called pastoral hypotension. Uh, when people get up from the bed because of reduced BP, the brain will not get blood supply and hence they feel little dizzy. Uh, apart from that, uh, some people get dizzy because of uh, pregnancy uh, due to some systemic factors, anemia, sometimes thyroid, uh, sometimes uh, vertebrobacillar insufficiency. Uh, these are also some of the uh, reasons why people get uh, dizziness, which are all uh, extra cervical or non spinal related dizziness. Uh, such dizziness needs definite medical intervention and uh, that may not be related to cervical spine. My talk today is more focused about cervical dizziness because cervicogenic dizziness is quite commonest nowadays because of increasing incidence of cervical spondylitis. But it is also important to rule out the other causes of dizziness before you get into the diagnosis of cervicogenic dizziness. Now let us compare and contrast the vertigo and the cervicogenic dizziness. Vertigo uh, you all know that the calcium carbonate crystal will get discharged for varying reasons and then it will go to one of the semicircular canals and that causes abrupt vertigo spells. Uh, the movement of that crystal in the semicircular canal will create some erratic messages to the brain and the brain perceives it as a threat and then the patient will feel the vertigo episode. Whereas in cervicogenic dizziness, the structures in the cervical spine, for example, people who are having uh, uh, cervical disc bulges or disc herniations or cervical canal stenosis or sometimes uh, when there is a radicular nerve compression in C2, C3, C4 level, if there is a nerve compression that is more likely to produce uh, cervicogenic dizziness. There, there are multitude reasons for cervicogenic reasons, but one thing is true that people who are having problem in the cervical spine will have cervicogenic dizziness. Uh, when it comes to the age group, who will be having cervicogenic dizziness? Uh, because the neck pain is quite prevalent among various age group, it can start as young as 20 years and it can go up to 60 or 70 years. Whereas in vertigo, the age group will be generally more than 40 years because in very young people, you will not expect that crystal to get dislodged. It is usually in age related degeneration can dislodge the crystal. So, we often times see that uh, in people uh, above 40 years or maybe 35 years old, but not more younger than that. When it comes to the symptom, the vertigo people symptomatically they feel their head is spinning uh, virulently around the room or sometimes the room will be spinning around their own body. Such kind of symptom will be simply intolerable by this patient. They have to grab some support or they have to lie down. The symptoms should be quite severe that it will be severely disabling the patient from doing day to day activity. When it comes to cervical dizziness, the symptom would be more of more of disorientation or losing the sense of their balance in the space, uh, little bit of lightheadedness, little bit of wavering feeling. So these are the symptoms of cervicogenic dizziness which is completely different from vertigo related head spinning. So people with head spinning they cannot tolerate but people with cervicogenic dizziness can tolerate. 
because it won't be as disabling as the vertigo okay let's talk about the onset the onset will be quite abrupt in vertigo all of a sudden one fine day they turn and get up in the morning and then they get that sudden attack of vertigo whereas dizziness is gradual in onset they will not really know when it really started and uh, as time passes the frequency of the dizziness will increase uh, but usually they don't remember so in cervicogenic dizziness the onset is gradual coming to the duration the duration in vertigo will be ranging from few hours to few days and usually it will resolve as they get the treatment in cervicogenic dizziness the duration will be of few seconds like 5 seconds 6 seconds and then they'll be normal they'll be carrying on their normal activity but again it will repeat uh, again they'll be normal so in cervicogenic dizziness the symptoms will not be too much in duration compared to the vertigo does this have any uh, movement pattern which which triggers the uh, attack yes in vertigo it's usually the turning of the head to one side or the other side will trigger the attack um, it typically happens in the morning when people turn to one side and get up that's the time they feel the vertigo and usually they'll have a pattern always it will be on one side they turn to the right they'll get the vertigo whereas if they turn to the left they won't have the vertigo so there will be a classic pattern of rotation inducing the vertigo in dizziness is usually the flexion extension of the neck which triggers the dizziness typically they'll be in the kitchen doing some cutting work and then they have to pick up something from the cupboard they look up that extension movement will create the dizziness okay so the flexion extension causing the dizziness in the neck group whereas rotation causing the vertigo in the vertigo group how to diagnose it in vertigo uh, there is something called uh, dix halpix maneuver in this test the patient will be abruptly made to lie in supine position with head turned to 45 degree and extended and if the patient feels the vertigo attack or if the patient has his eyeballs oscillating otherwise called as nystagmus which is lasting for about 30 to 45 seconds then that's confirmation of uh, vertigo there are some uh, vertigo specific uh, medications like uh, vertin and stujira if the vertigo specific medicine works for these patients then that is also a confirmation for vertigo these medicines will hardly work for cervicogenic dizziness population because the mechanism of dizziness is different here compared to vertigo how to diagnose cervicogenic dizziness it is quite ambiguous and uncertain because cervicogenic dizziness is the diagnosis by elimination you need to eliminate all other potential reasons for dizziness and if nothing is proven true then what you have is cervical spine and then you need to do a cervical spine evaluation uh, typically the patient will have a history of neck pain uh, sometimes pain going to the arm the pain going to the head causing headache uh, there will be a restricted uh, neck uh, range of movement it won't be free enough uh, our neck movements will produce the pain our neck movements can induce the dizziness so these are all the associated symptoms along with the dizziness so if the patient's having a proven history of cervical spondylitis uh, with a clinical symptoms of cervical spondylitis with dizziness then we diagnose them as cervicogenic dizziness provided you rule out all other potential reason for dizziness apart from that you can double confirm by doing imaging x-ray and mri are the imaging of choices in x-ray you can typically see the loss of cervical lordosis or probably reduction in the disc space uh, probably osteophytic changes or uh, sclerotic markings um, these are all the x-ray changes that you will see in mri you will see how much the disc is bulging how much is the canal stenosis uh, is it c3 c4 involved because c3 c4 level are so salient to the cervicogenic dizziness if the mri is showing positive findings if the patient is also having symptoms of cervical spondylitis you have also ruled out all other potential causes of dizziness then you can diagnose this patient as having cervicogenic dizziness with reasonable amount of confidence okay that's how you diagnose cervicogenic dizziness now the treatment of cervicogenic dizziness is even more complex because you cannot treat cervicogenic dizziness just for the dizziness per se you need to treat the cervical spondylitis since the the spine is getting corrected since the pathology is getting corrected the symptom of dizziness will go away by itself as the patient gets their mobility back as the patients get their pain reduced the as the patient uh, reduces the disc bulges as the patient gets the curvature back the dizziness also would come down so the treatment is quite complex uh, in cervicogenic dizziness compared to vertigo in vertigo you do the aplis maneuver sometimes the crystal will get drained immediately and patient will have abrupt improvement of the symptoms so if the apli maneuver works immediately that's also a confirmation that it is a vertigo whereas in vertigo the treatment is quite simple you give medications probably you do the aplis maneuver the problem will be solved in cervicogenic dizziness 
it is quite complex that's why you have to meet a, a right physiotherapist who can understand the intricacies of cervical spine and as the neck is getting corrected the dizziness will go away i trust you now know the differences between cervicogenic dizziness and vertigo uh, it is very important because uh, if you are having cervicogenic dizziness and if you are taking vertin then probably you are going to uh, not get cured and, and the, your problem of dizziness is going to get chronic and chronic if it is a vertigo related problem it's better to go to an ent doctor first and then you can choose whether you can go to a therapist who are trained in vestibular rehabilitation if you are having a cervicogenic dizziness then you have to choose a, a physical therapist who is trained in treating the cervical spine so that the chances of you getting better is quite good you meet the right healthcare professional based on what kind of symptoms you have this will help you in long term recovery uh, i hope you liked our video as usual please uh, watching us uh, we will come with more videos thank you